A few weeks back, we did a video on this channel where we laid the draw for every single Premier League game throughout the course of a whole weekend. Now, a few of you guys really didn't like that idea, but a few of you guys also thought it was quite interesting to see how different trades would happen when you hadn't planned for any of the games. You just went in blindly with a full selection of games to see in general what happens with that strategy. Today I'm going to be doing the exact same approach with the under 2.5 goal strategy. However, around about the time I was recording this video, it, there was no Premier League games on at the weekend. It was a midweek fixtures list and I either had to do it for every championship game or for every Serie A game over the course of two nights. Now the Serie A only had a few games on, so thankfully I chose that one because if I'd have done it on every championship game, I would have had needed a lot of money to be able to get that up and running. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys me using my favourite Betfair training strategy, which is the under 2.5 goal strategy, on every single Serie A game from a group of midweek fixtures. Now before we get into this, this isn't a tutorial video for how you can use Betfair trading. It isn't any advice towards Betfair trading. This is me just messing around with a strategy and seeing what happens if you blindly apply it to a group of games. It's not recommended ever when you come to do Betfair trading that you do this approach. This is just to see what happens. So hopefully you enjoy this and enjoy watching me having to react. I quite enjoy doing this because it kind of forces you to really learn the strategy because it forces you into micromanaging about four or five different games at a time. It teaches you to adapt to loads of different variations of what happens in the games and it really gets you thinking on your feet. So I really quite enjoy it. So hopefully you'll enjoy it too. If you do enjoy Betfair trading videos or just general how to make money online videos or even so rare videos, then please do be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and most importantly hit the like button and while you're down there if you have any recommendations for strategies you want me to try out any strategies you want me to learn anything you want me to do on so rare any websites you want me to try out that possibly can end up with you making money then please do let me know in the comments down below and i'll be sure to add it to my list i read every single comment and i add every single suggestion to my list of ideas so Let's get into these trades and I'll show you exactly what happened. So as you can see, these are the fixtures we're going with. This was the selection of midweek games available on that day. You can see there was Juventus Sassuolo, there was Sampdoria Atalanta, there was Udinese versus Hellas Verona, Cagliari versus Roma, Empoli Inter and Lazio Fiorentini. You can also see the odds over here on the left hand side for the under 2.5 goal section. All of them were a solid selection off the bat anyway for under 2.5 goals. They were all quite a decent range of odds. None were too low. There were two of them there that were particularly quite high. The Empoli Inter one, that was very high. The Juventus one as well. They're ones that normally you might actually look to avoid because they were very high odds anyway. So the market maybe expects the goals. So might not have been the best idea for them ones. And then maybe... If we were pushing it, the Udinese Verona one, you normally like really close to that 2.0 odds for under 2.5 goals. So that one there probably wasn't worth doing. And that's probably the case. But doing this strategy, we're going to have ones like the Empoli into one where the odds are a lot higher than what you'd normally use in this strategy. And then the ones like the Udinese Verona one where the odds are a lot lower. And it might not even be worthwhile using the strategy. But let's get into this. And see what happens. So the first three games you can see here. Luckily it was split, split three and three. So it was a bit easier to manage than the Premier League one a few weeks back. And this time around I didn't have any drinks. But you can see here. Nice easy split. Three and three. Easy to micromanage. So we went in and put on our trade. So you can see that I did it very quickly. I just went to the under 2.5 goal section. And put on my stake. I think we used a £10 stake on each of the games tonight. So that's a total of £60 stake across all the games. We don't ever go in with too big of a stake on this channel. You guys know that. You can also see that once these had all been laid, we then just waited for the games to kick off. So in four minutes time, we opened up all the different games and we got started. Now, one thing I did this time around, just to make sure I didn't miss out on any potentially great profit, 
I set up an auto cash out. So if you don't know what that is, on Betfair you can come over here to this section and you can either do a partial cash out, as this will show you here, or you can do an auto cash out. So in the auto cash out, I put in £3.10. That is because the auto cash out includes the commission. So for example, over here on the left hand side, I've used and filtered some of my settings in the account to make sure that this profit over here will show me how much I'll get after my commission has been taken off. 2% commission for anyone wondering. So I know here this is the exact profit I will get after commission's gone. But when you use the auto cash out feature, it includes that commission still. So if I put in a flat £3 there, I would actually be getting less than £3 after the commission's gone. So I boosted it up to £3.10. I did this for all the games tonight just to make sure that if for some reason I didn't look at a game for a long time, I would be able just to leave that market with some profit and not have to worry about it. But we have our first bit of action here, three minutes into the game. Now this comes from the game that was least expecting the over 2.5 goal market. And there was a goal in the game. So now with the under 2.5 goal strategy, you guys know you have two options. You can either cash out and take your loss, which is the preferred way to do it. But when there's a game like this where it was really short odds for under 2.5 goals, there was no, pretty much the market didn't expect this at all. It was very unlikely it was going to happen. So in this situation, I thought to myself, I'm okay following the market here. That's the whole point in this little experiment. We're not using our own initiative. We're not doing research. We're just going to back exactly what the market expects. So with that in mind, with Udinese Verona, I went straight over to the market and I think I removed the auto cash out. I did have a bit of a think about it, as you do. And to be honest, it's not the worst idea to just wait for a few seconds just to let the market to readjust. So that's exactly what I did. You can see if I was to cash out now, I would be losing a good 50% of my stake there. But I was quite happy in this scenario to stick with the market, wait for the odds just to boost up drastically like what happens when you get an early goal and then I was just going to back myself with another additional I think we went in with another five pound stake so if we just wait for this to happen you can see I'm just waiting for the market to go up because it was sat at like 2.6 there I think 2.7 it will just rise a little bit more here before the market finally settles out so it's better just to wait and you can see there how much it actually jumped the weird thing is it jumped really high but it was still less likely to get over 2.5 goals than the inter empoli game that kicked off later on somehow the odds just don't correlate sometimes but you can see it went up to 2.9 finally the end and i had decided to put in another five pound normally if you want to do this strategy and try and in a way chase your loss but the odds are still kind of with you then it's normally expected that you go in with your whole stake again. The reason I didn't do that is because you can see by my balance up here at the top, if I would have then lost that £10 that I would have put in again, I wouldn't have had enough to do the rest of the games. So I thought I'd just go in with a fiver and then I can add in an extra fiver later on if needed. So I added in the £5 there to this trade, taking my total liability up to £15, but I was fairly confident that this game didn't expect that goal and after looking at the stats it was one shot on target one goal and it stayed like that for a very long time so about 10 minutes into the trade is normally where you'd be expecting to cash out of these trades you can see Sampdoria Atalanta however did have a goal come in it now this is a game where I thought out of all of them I was kind of expecting that it'd be goals. Yes, you've got Juventus versus Sassuolo and Inter Empoli, but I think with teams like that, they're going to sit back in them games. There's not going to be as many goals. But with a team like Atalanta, they're always scoring goals and conceding them. Their games are always manic. So as soon as a goal went in in that game, I was very happy just to cash out and take my loss for that one. So we waited for that one to adjust, and then we did cash out and take our loss. I think our loss in the end ended up being... £3.42 after the full cash out and you can see here after this is all confirmed that's exactly what we ended up with we ended up with a £3.42 loss which isn't too bad it's about 40% from that £10 stake 
I just wasn't comfortable leaving that one in there. You can see two different trains of thought from the game earlier where there was a goal. But this one, as soon as them teams start scoring, they do not stop. So I was happy to get out of that market. But like I said before, around the 10th minute, that's where your profit is going to start to shine. Unless you feel a bit ballsy and you look at the stats of the game or you're watching it and you don't think a goal's coming, 10th to 15th minute is normally an ideal spot to get out. You can see from these games, first of all, Udinese Verona were already starting to drift back down from their mods that we added in earlier on. So we went back in at 2.94 and 2.92 and you can see it's already down to 2.7. So we're making profit on that original on the additional stake we put in, but we're still not down to the heights of 1.74 yet. But we've already made some of our money back from that loss. So we've already cut down that loss and limited how much we were going to lose. So I'm quite happy about that so far. The Sampdoria Atalanta game, we're obviously fully out of at this point now. So that one we can just forget about and push to one side. And then we got the Juventus Sassuolo game. Well, you can see the odds have dropped not as much as you'd normally expect in the first 10 minutes that shows that it might have been a bit more of a lively game but it has still dropped overall you can see we could get out for a 77 pence profit which is around a seven percent profit so it's not too bad of a profit but i was happy just to leave that one especially after looking at the stats of the game by the way it's always better to watch the game than just watch the stats but from the stats which is all i have available to me it did seem to be a very nice just chilled game where not a lot was happening so i was happy to stay in the market with that game as well then around the 15th minute you can see we're up to about 13 percent profit in the event of sassuolo game we're only down to two pound 14 pence loss in the udinese verona game and i was quite happy with how things were going at this point it's not looking too bad obviously a goal from juventus kills us at the moment but i was still happy to stick in and get a bit more profit when i first learned this strategy there was a lot of people saying that you can actually stay in for as long as you feel comfortable. Now, I thought this was the perfect opportunity to try that out. No one's re no one watching this thinks I'm taking this too seriously. Everyone knows I'm just having a bit of a mess around with the strategy. So I thought to myself, as long as I feel comfortable that a goal isn't immediately coming around the corner, I'm going to see how long I can stick in this market and actually see how much that profit extends over the period of the match. Normally, I would have been out of all three markets by now. But I was very happy just to stay in these. If we look at the stats for the Hellas Verona Udinese game, still just that one shot on target and that one goal. So I was very happy with how that was going. Probably should have backed that with another 10, but I was a bit cautiously optimistic with that one. So I'm glad we only went in with a 5. And then we also see a refresh there because I just didn't believe that the stats were real there. And then we got the Sassuolo Juventus game where you can see there again, not a lot is happening, no big chances. I was more than happy just to keep that one waiting as well. I could have got out for a nice 13% profit if I chose to, or in this case, nearly 15% profit, but I just didn't see much of a point. While there was nothing going on in the game, I really was just happy to leave that stake in there and see how much profit we could get. See if we could get close to that £3.10. Udinese Verona at the 20th minute, down to only £1.47 loss, so you can see how beneficial the loss, loss retention, is that the right word? how beneficial that strategy is when you know when to use it properly. Obviously, early goal can kick a game off and really get everyone scoring, like the other game on this video, the Atalanta one, where there's already 1-1 at this point, I believe. But it can also do the complete opposite and really just kill off a game and have both teams sit back. Now, with the event of Sassuolo, you can see we're at £1.76 worth of profit here. And I was thinking to myself... I need to start slowly getting my stake out of this game now. I'm happy to leave it in for a bit longer, but I don't want to leave my full stake there. So you can see, looking at the liability on the left-hand side, we've already took out £2 of our original stake, and we're already planning on getting a bit more of our stake taken out there as well. You can see there, 1-1 in the atalanta Sampdoria game. So I was very happy we got out of that one. We would basically have nothing left at this point in that game. So we made the right choice. And then I thought to myself, Maybe this is a good opportunity here just to get out of the Juventus game. It is 16 minutes in. It is 20% profit at this point, so that would be a very nice return. But I was actually looking to see what would happen if we just removed all our liability, because that is also a valid exit point for this strategy. If I was to take out my £8 of liability over here, you can see that would leave in whatever profit we have in the game. So we could potentially still go away with nothing, but we could also potentially go away with that £4.61. 
So it's sometimes a nice little middle ground if you're not comfortable yet taking out your full liability in the game or your full amount that's just floating around your profit that you've accumulated so far but you want to get rid of all your risk that is always a valid option i just didn't think in this scenario here that i was up for doing that so again i just left that stake in there for a bit longer to see what happened i did however take out another three pounds leaving us with just the five pounds left in there but you can see the profit there is getting to a very nice point if you do go in with a higher stake like you'd obviously see other people on youtube do if you'd gone in with your hundred pound you'd be looking at around about a £23, £24 profit there. If you'd gone in with your £200, you'd be looking at like a £50 return. So it is quite a nice return. You've just got to think of it more in percentages than in value because I do go in with smaller stakes. Just to showcase the scores there as well, you can see Atalanta now 2-1 up. I did anticipate that and I'm glad we chose to get out of that market. The other two games still going as we kind of expected. Although I did expect the Juventus game to have a bit more goals in from at the beginning I'll be honest but the Udinese Verona one we trusted the market's initial instincts with that and it looks like we were right to do that so far so now approaching the 25th minute you can see we're only down to a 26 pence loss at this point with the Udinese Verona game and if we go over and look at the Juventus Sassuolo game as well you can see that we were over three pounds worth of profit now this is where I'm a bit of an idiot because I was quite happy to leave this trade going. We'd only got £5 of liability left on there. I was kind of leaving this till half-time, thinking, I want to see what happens if you hit that half-time mark, and it's still nil-nil. But I forgot to take off my auto cash-out. So as you'll see in just a second here, when we come back to this page, automatic cash-out, £3 profit. We knew it was going to come. I just... I'm an absolute idiot for forgetting to cancel it. I wanted to leave this trade till half time just to see what happens, but at the end of the day, nice 30% return there on our initial £10 stake. I can't complain too much. That was a very nice return. 23 minutes in the game, fully cashed out, no liability left. We made £3.04. Atalanta game lost us £3.42. So at the moment, we're only around about 38 pence down. So it's not the worst scenario in the world. And then we just had the Udinese Verona game left to cope with. And as you can see here, around the 33rd minute, there was the opportunity to get out for some profit. Now at this point, Verona, I think we're going for it a bit more. They'd had three or four shots and we're looking like they were really starting to get into the game. So I was happy just to cash out for that profit there. At one point, we were potentially losing 40, 50% of our stake. You can see during the game, I also did take out £10 of my liability, so there was only £5 left. But at this point, I was happy just to get out of the trade and take away a profit. Because that didn't look very likely in the third minute when Udinese took the lead. So you'll see in just a second, I do confirm this cash out. And I believe we take away 16 pence worth of profit in the end. And you can see there, once it is additionally confirmed here, we do get 16%. So at the moment, after the initial first three games of the night, we have... Atalanta where we lost £3.42 but I can tell you if I don't know if I look at the scores here I don't think I do have a look in case I do I do here so you can see Atalanta Sampdoria we would have lost our whole stake if we weren't micromanaging the game but we lost only 34% of the stake in that scenario we made 30% profit from our Juventus and Sassuolo game probably more if I hadn't set up that auto cash out feature and then we have Verona Udinese, where we also made just about 2% profit, but that looked very good from a game that had a third minute goal. You can see there by the pressure graph down here, for those who don't know on sofa score, the higher up the bar or the higher lower higher the lower down the bar, the closer the bar gets to the edges, the better the attack is of that team. If it goes up, it's the home team, down the away team. So you can see. Pretty much that was all just chilled out, but recently there, Udinese were really going for it. That's why I wanted to get a stake out of that game. But at this point here, 22 pence down, a 2% loss. I wasn't feeling too bad about that. Going a bit better than the lay in the draw on all games from a few weeks back. And just to irritate myself here even more, I came back to the event of Sassuolo game later on. 42nd minute, still 0-0. Look at that over 
2.5 goal mark there. To look at it. I think, to be honest, this was the point where a goal had gone in. And you can see, yes, it was. It was where Sassuolo scored. So, to be honest, my plan was actually going to be leaving that money in until half-time. So, auto cash out there did save me. Sometimes, if you're like me and you get a bit carried away with things, so how I got a bit carried away with that profit and thought, oh, well, to leave it in until half-time, see how good of a profit it becomes. That auto cash out can be a saviour. It limits you to stick to your exit point. If you put in your desired profit when you get into the match and just forget you place that auto cash out, it can prove to be very helpful in the long run because it will really benefit you and it will force you to get out of the market when you wanted to in the first place. So although you can see here, even though there's a goal gone in, we still would have actually been in profit because we backed at 2.82 and it's down at 2.28. So we still would have been in profit at this point because the game had gone on that long. We just wouldn't have been in as much profit as what we were when we cashed out. But that is it for the first three games. Let's see what happens with the next three. Now you can see here the odds for the next three. We just went in again with the flat £10 for each of these games. 2.6, 3.05 and 2.36. It was quite a, just a nice and simple amount of games there. You can see what the results of the other games actually were in the end. If we just stuck with the Udinese Verona game, if I can just go back here a few seconds, I'll just wait till I get back to that page. But if we look at the results, once I managed to load up sofa score here, you can see that Juventus Sassuolo, if we'd have left our whole stake in for the whole duration of the match, we would have lost everything. Sim with Atalanta Salvadoria, but then Udinese Hellas Verona, the market expected there to be under 2.5 goals, and the market was right in that scenario. The market was right for all three games, to be honest, and it shows by the final results, just to show how well the market predicts things. Udinese Verona did finish 1-1 in the end, would have been a bit nervy and cagey towards the end, but if we left our whole stake in there, we would have made a very nice profit. But we never leave our full stake in to the end of the games, unless we're doing a late laying the draw strategy, I suppose. But in this scenario, I was very happy with how we managed to manage them three games. We got a profit out of two of them, and we got a better loss than what we would have if we hadn't cashed out early on that Atalanta Sampdoria game. But now let's get into these three games. We've got Lazio Fiorentina, Calori Roma, Empoli Inter, and I'll be honest, this one's a lot less action packed. I was quite experimental with the first three doing tactics I might not normally do, trying to leave things a bit longer and do things like that. I thought with this three, I'd just do it as if I was doing a normal laying the laying the draw strategy, a normal under 2.5 goal strategy. In that scenario, it's wait till the 10th minute, cash out for a nice 10%-ish profit, and leave the market. And that's exactly what I did in all three of these games, because at the 10th minute, all three games were nil-nil. We had Lazio Fiorentina, where we'd already made a 10% profit there. We had Cagliari Roma. I believe I've just looked at these the wrong way around, so let's just go back a few seconds here. Just to show you the stats then as well, to make it a bit easy for you. You can see Cagliari Roma, pretty much a dead, boring game, 10 minutes in. We've got Empoli Inter, again, a little bit dead. Inter going for it, possibly a bit more. And then Lazio Fiorentina, really dead, nothing happening. So you can see 15% return on Empoli Inter. That's obviously a big return because of how high up them odds were initially. So it really helps us when it comes to the odds dropping over time. You can see already at this point, I took out 5% or 50% of my stake. We're down to only £5 liability. That is just because of how high them odds were for that game. It's not normally a game I would have risked my stake in. So at this point, I was really trying to micromanage that game in particular and make sure we didn't lose too much of our stake. But you can see there, 15% return on that game. Roma, Cagliari, we'd also took out 50% of our stake, down only to the £5 of liability, up 13% in that game. And then the Lazio Fiorentina still had our full £10 in. It was a bit more confident with that game. There wasn't a lot going on. And you can see we had a nice 10% return on that game as well. And I was just happy to keep leaving them in and see what happened. This is also something you can do if you're not 100% comfortable with the auto cash out profit auto profit lock in system thing that we did in the first three games. You can just queue up a trade. So in this scenario here, I went for the Cali Roma game, 
chose to lay the odds, put in my own custom back odds and how much I wanted to lay. And that way, if the odds drop to that point, it will execute that trade for you. I just thought I'd put that in in case the odds dropped massively. I'd want to be able just to exit the trade whilst I wasn't looking at the screen in case a goal then came whilst I was doing other stuff as well. So you can do that as well if you want to be a bit cautious. This is probably my preferred method just because you can outline at what point and how much you go out. So you don't have to do your full stake. You can just do small increments. It's completely up to you. You could even before a game starts put in your full liability and then set out predetermined layer sections. So maybe take out 20% of your stake once the odds get to this point, an extra 20 there, then an extra 60 once they get really low. Just something like that to make sure you don't have to fully micromanage your games. And at this point, 12 minutes in, I normally do like to stay between the 10th and 15th minute, just wherever I look like there's a decent amount of profit coming out. And I decided it was time to get out of all three markets. I was quite happy with the profit returns for all three of them. All three were nil-nil, fairly boring. Especially the Lazio Fiorentina one, but the other two were looking a bit more interesting, like a goal could come. But Lazio Fiorentina, I was happy just to get out at this point. So with Lazio Fiorentina, we made £1.71 pence profit in the end once everything was finalised. Let's just get cashed out here. So you can see, finally cashing out of our Lazio Fiorentina there, getting ourselves that £1.71 pence guaranteed profit. We then went to Cagliari Roma where we got £2.10 guaranteed profit from that match in the end. And then we went over to Empoli Inter, where we got £1.81 profit from that game as well. You can see I'm kind of rushing here at the end. I just wanted to showcase to you guys what was going on. And if we can just get back this screen up here. In fact, what date was this? Just to show this off a bit easier then, whilst we're on this screen... Got all the trades up from them given dates. You can see exactly how much profit and how much loss we made on all of them. I wish I could sort by profit loss, but you can't, unfortunately. We made our biggest loss was a 34% loss down there, but our biggest profit was a 30%. That was unfortunately capped by me doing the auto cash out. We got a nice £2.10 from the Calgary Roma game. £1 or 18%, I should say, over from the Empoli Inter. Probably would have been more if I wasn't too cautious with that when I took out that initial 50% of our liability quite early on in that game because it was looking a bit active. But in the end, we took away, took away £5.41 pence profit. In total, we had obviously £65 worth of stakes once you include the extra £5 we put on to the Udinese Verona game. So in the end, we made an 8.32% return, which isn't too bad. For about an hour and a half's worth of work. Obviously, it's never going to happen exactly as it happened here. This is a rare scenario where the majority of them actually did quite well. But you can still see how I reacted to all the scenarios. So hopefully, if you're new to under 2.5 goals, this strategy or this video will be quite beneficial to you. Because you can see how I reacted in real time to all of these different methods and all the different reactions to the games. But if you enjoyed the video, please do be sure to hit the like button. It makes a huge difference. Even makes more of a difference than hitting that subscribe button, if I'm completely honest. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video. And let me know also if you want to see me do this any more times. Or if you want me to, see the, want me to do this live, possibly, on a live stream. Where we can just mess around with stuff like this. And please do let me know. I do read every single comment. But please let me know some ideas for other videos as well. I've been doing this for nearly a year now and I am starting to run out of ideas. Uh, don't worry, I've got pretty much planned till February. But if you give me some ideas, I will stick them in fairly soon and get them done quicker than my other ideas. I'm not going to burn out anytime soon, but I could really do with hearing what you guys want to see.